so this is a new reading in 2017 syllabus algorithmic trading and hft high frequency trading generally the pattern uh, if you would observe uh, history of cf institute exams especially level 2 tradings which are newly added to the syllabus have a at least in my understanding have a, a higher probability of being tested on the exam okay now this reading is mostly theory but uh, substantially more interesting than the other theory readings that we've been doing so far uh, does anyone know what algo trading means it's a software based trading so you are making use of computers to trade and can you tell me why why computers are useful they are faster yes ha to kind of eliminate the i mean of course apart from the fact that uh, it gives you a lot of insights it's substantially faster uh, one of the reason why you would also want to do it is because softwares are emotionless so in fact uh, last week i uh, had a meeting with one of the fund manager who runs a fund uh, based on algorithms and uh, so that fund was uh, based on some sort of algos on future contracts and options and then i asked him that how frequently uh, you been working on your codes and do you get tempted when you make money so what he said is that my system is working and i do not want to poke into it every now and then okay so the benefit of this is when a human is trading uh, we tend to get carried away isn't it if you making profits you don't feel like selling early but if you making losses yeah you you want to kind of or it could be other way around also so with benefit with machines coming into picture is that you remove that element of emotions so what they've said is that algo is simply using computers and hft is finding out uh, some important pieces of information data insights based on uh, whatever data that's available and then trying to build profitable strategies okay so that's the summary of the reading uh, these are the learning outcomes there are a lot of technical jargons that they've used but we'll spend some time on them today so this is your first flow chart first we'll uh, run through it together and then you can write this down so as we discussed algo trading is using computers to trade and then there are two types of uh, algos that we would be looking at execution and hft algorithms so the idea of execution would be execute large size of orders think of hedge funds or maybe larger mutual funds where the ticket size of transaction is very high so when the transaction size is very high there is a substantial cost involved which is called as the impact cost do you know what is impact cost spot on yes when you are processing large quantity of orders it might affect the prices in the market for example price of the stock is 50 you want to buy so you put a large buy order quantity and because of your order the demand in the market goes up and the prices go up okay so the job of these algorithms is to somehow systematically slice these orders into smaller components and hft would be for finding out profit generating opportunities okay so the difference of two large classes of these algos with execution your focus is to reduce come on impact cost or transaction cost and with hft your focus is to generate profitable opportunities what about opportunity opportunity cost is one of the transaction cost impact cost has both it, it has a element of drift cost which is not executing the transaction and element of impact cost so execution algorithms execute large orders with minimum price impact i'll give you time to write just focus hft algorithms analysis of data for profit trades then this execution algorithms will break it down into three parts vwap algorithms vwap is volume weighted come on average prices so what you do in these algorithms is uh, imagine you are looking at a stock and you intend to purchase large quantity so you capture historical data of uh, maybe last few months 
and then you figure out what is the time of the day at which there is maximum volume on the stock okay what is the time of the day when the volume relatively decreases and based on that you build algorithm which will decide when to execute what quantity of your orders is that okay so you are picking up historical data and you are going to use that data to decide what time of the day orders should be booked then implementation uh, shortfall algorithms so the idea here is now think of it this way you wish to buy 10 million shares of a particular stock okay now current price of the stock is 50 you have two choices one that you put buy quantity of entire 10 million and then what might happen is you might get some share at 50 but after that your incremental cost of purchase would be higher this is referred to as impact cost okay now as against that you decide that uh, let's buy this in a piecemeal fashion so let's put small small lots of 100 each now if you put small lots of 100 each over the period of let's say two weeks there's a possibility that price might fluctuate away from 50 do you agree because of market forces which is called drift so the idea of implementation shortfall algorithms is they will take historical data build some logic around it and then they will try to balance between your impact cost and drift so when you revise this section i just want you to remember the word balance it will automatically help you recall what the uh, algo really does on the market it will be yes so no dollar cost averaging does not uh, sorry i'll just finish uh, dollar cost averaging does not mean the price will be around 50 it depends on which direction market moves correct so see there are two elements one is your decision to buy stock for whatever reason okay maybe you are expecting a significant upside on that so second here we are not concerned about profit that you earn from the stock here we are concerned about reduction of transaction costs at the time of buying the stock so if you buy everything now you would end up pushing the prices up but if you don't buy everything now there is a possibility price itself will fluctuate in either of the direction so that is called drift this is your impact cost you want to kind of balance the two it could be anything yes so if you are buying in small small lots so think of it this way if you buy in two small lots correct so if you buy a lots of 100 100 100 for 10 million then there is a possibility that some of the lots you end up purchasing at a very higher cost do you agree with me because the prices are moving away but if you buy too large then there is a possibility that because of your order itself prices will go up so you want to somehow figure out what is the appropriate strategy for slicing those orders and that you would do based on some algorithms so that is IS algos yes sir it could be mean reversion it could not be we don't know so here it's not a trading strategy so in hft week we are concerned about mean reversion do you guys remember mean reversion yes so when you're building a strategy to make profit you would focus more on mean reversion right now you are just focusing on balancing out the cost that's it and market participation algo is kind of similar to vwap the difference here is here you are more focused on historical data okay and here you are more focused on current data okay so again using current data you want to decide how to slice your orders is that okay then uh, hft algorithms so again there are different categories this section is called statistical arbitrage which is kind of a larger uh, category within hft and then they have recommended some strategies here so what you do is now you write down the flowchart and then we will discuss each of the component one more time all right so now statistical arbitrage number one pairs trading you might have heard this multiple times so far that you you pick up the stock which is undervalued sell the stock which is or bond or asset which is overvalued and then you expect them to converge to their intrinsic values index arbitrage what they've said here is uh, if you see a particular sector 
which is exhibiting momentum okay for example let us say if you think that uh, it sector is exhibiting strong northward momentum but there is one stock which is not picked up the momentum yet so then there is a possibility that the because of the positive correlation between the stock and the sector there is a possibility that stock might align itself with how sector is moving so then you take long position on these type of opportunities are you okay this is what they said is index arbitrage basket trading and pair trading same concept the difference being instead of taking position on individual stocks you take position on basket of the securities so you do whatever uh, data analysis and machine learning that you need you need to do and then figure out uh, which baskets have some sort of a correlation with each other basket of stocks and then you build trades around this and spread trading is what we will see in the next slide okay so now this is open in front of you you can ask whatever questions you would like next market does it work only for momentum strategies or value so all these are trading strategies these are not investment strategies okay which means we are not really uh, getting into value stocks and growth stocks we are just trying to trade based on whatever op opportunities available in the market and make money so and to me it kind of sounds very logical at least in theory that uh, if you see some momentum on a sector then there is a possibility that uh, the stock should also exhibit the momentum all the stocks or most of the stocks so if you see uh, it this way that a particular stock is not exhibiting that momentum yet within fraction of seconds this is not over a period of days this is within the day then there is a high possibility the stock will so you teach your computer to understand situations like these where index is moving but the stock is not and then at that point the computer will enter your order yes any questions here sorry ha 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 there is no there is no short yeah so even though they've called arbitrage technically so the, what they've said is uh, in fact even the curriculum also they've written even though it is called as arbitrage it doesn't really mean riskless profit what it means is that you're going to make a few pennies uh, you know on a dollar but they've said because you would do it in such large magnitude and so frequently that it will turn out to be substantial profit it doesn't have to be a pure arbitrage the way we learn in uh, derivatives or the subjects so are we not increasing the factor risk by taking the position on the stock which is not it is not risk free so had it been risk free of course then all of you, all of us would have been invested only into this these type of strategies they are not risk free of course what they do is they do a large amount of back testing you know so you you pick up data for last one and a half year you build a algorithm and you test that algorithm on data for last 18 months 20 months and see if it would have worked in the past if yes it might work in future yes any questions here uh spread trade there are lot of different types of spreads which we will see so have you guys uh, maybe what you can also write down here below implementation shortfall you can write down impact cost versus drift okay so that when you revise it becomes a little easier to remember impact cost versus drift yes you can so yeah that's a good question so he said that uh, in execution algorithm there are strategies to uh, slice the order but there is also an opportunity to trade through hidden orders we call them as dark pools Uh, so you can trade through dark pools as well, uh, but the thing with dark pool is not necessary that every stock will provide you liquidity, and not necessary that you would sell in a dark pool uh, at current market price. You might sell at a substantially lower market price as well. But yes, dark pool is also one of the execution strategy. So dark pools are like these. Uh, these are uh, if you remember ATS. alternative trading systems that we discussed at level 1 so these are these exchanges or smaller exchanges made by 
uh, private investment banks like maybe JP Morgan. If you, if some some of you from level one would remember, I had shown you a list of all the ATS. So uh, at these platforms, they allow you to trade without uh, disclosing the identity of the seller. Okay, so even that is one of the possibility, but of course it comes with its own risk. Yes, any of these questions you would like to ask? Okay, so assuming you've understood this, uh, 